Whoa, why, why am I semi-transparent right now? I guess that makes me clear Tommy. Ah, clever comedy, yeah. yeah. Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old, and today I'm talking about the uh, two new EPs from Igloo Ghost, called Clear Tame and Steel Mogu. Igloo Ghost is one of the true originals in electronic music right now. His sound is so unlike anyone else out there, so packed with lots and lots of detail that it basically goes beyond words. There's so much coming out of his music that my brain is unable to fully process all of it. He is not an artist that sounds like he's of this earth. There's so much insanity packed into all of his productions, so much variety in instrumentation, and the sounds he does tend to use are not sounds you hear on anyone else's productions. He's almost impossible to describe, but I will say his bright and colorful album artwork typically can be a good indication on what his stuff is like especially his Chinese New Year EP from a while back. Now, uh, some people may remember, I did review his debut album, Neo Wax Bloom, last year, and I really enjoyed the creativity and clear amount of effort he put into that album, though I also noted that the album had a crap ton of chipmunk vocals that I just couldn't really get into, and the experience was almost just too much for me, it was too overwhelming, that I, I didn't feel like it'd be something I could listen to on a regular basis. And sure enough, the album just barely missed the cut for my year-end list that year, and I haven't listened to it a single time since making that video. I can appreciate the insane amount of effort and originality that goes into Igloo Ghost's music, but it can be a bit much for me personally. I was a little intrigued by this double EP release here, though, because we got one EP here called Clear Tame, which has a brighter and more colorful album cover with this white background, and another EP called Steel Mogu, which had a more limited color scheme with a black background. It looks like they were going to be these two contrasting works. And after actually listening to both a couple of times, my thoughts are basically... And this is kind of just more stuff from Neo X Bloom, basically. I mean, I don't think the two EPs really contrast each other in an obvious way. I guess they could work together in the same package, but... I could make the case for basically everything Igloo Ghost has put out so far to be able to be put in the same package. But yeah, if you love Neo X Bloom, you'll probably be pleased to find these EPs basically deliver on the exact same kind of stuff. But as a result, basically all my thoughts and misgivings with Neo X Bloom also apply to these two EPs. Now they're particularly long, but I feel like I've well gotten my fill at the end of each one. They still deliver on the quirkiness and insanity you would expect out of Igloo Ghost, but the chipmunk vocals that I wasn't really into are still here. I know they're his thing, but I don't really enjoy them much. They're still kind of the main contributor to my finding his releases a little on the overwhelming side. And I also don't see myself putting either EP on my iPod or putting these on regularly, even if I am highly impressed by the amount of work that went into them. And on top of that, there is the new issue with me that I don't think these delivered on anything new for him, and the novelty of his music being as insane as it is, it's not as strong now that I know exactly what I'm getting into. I will say, though, they both deliver on some brilliant moments, so I'll give them that. So let's talk about individual tracks. I will say between the two EPs, I probably preferred Clear Tame. Certainly has the better intro with the field recordings of birds, and uh, the opener, New Vectors, has a lot of warmer pianos and strings underneath all the usual weird bells and whistles. Literal bells and whistles. <laughs> Even as some operatic female singing at points, I think this uh, track may very well be the most I've gotten out of an Igloo Ghost track to date so far. And the title track from here is probably the catchiest track on either EP, uh, with some low-pitched Japanese-sounding rapping. Thankfully, it has some more subtle moments within it, like it has a straight piano solo at one point. Although, right after that, there's just some chaotic drum and bass moments as well. <laughs> I will say the more organic instrumentation all over this EP is a very welcome addition for me. The remaining two tracks, though, aren't anything to super write home about. Nama, I'm told, has some guitars in there. I guess I can kind of hear them, but they're not precisely the focus. Like, there's more babies screaming than guitars. I think there was something resembling a guitar solo at one point, but it's modulated to sound like a synth, if it was a guitar at all. And the closer Shrine Hacker, featuring someone else called, a uh, Bobby. 
bad, bad. I want to like this one more than I think I actually do as well. Pretty sure it's the longest single track Igloo Ghost has done so far at seven minutes, over seven minutes. I think there are a couple he's made that are like mixes of like several different tracks though. And even so, this one is also technically really just two tracks in one. You have the first five and a half minutes or so, which has what I assume to be our featured guest here singing over it, with some occasional moments where she's even pitched up. Did not need that, thank you. <laughs> and this flute-heavy outro tacked on that really doesn't have much to do with what came before. It's cool and all, but I'm definitely feeling its length. Yeah, there, there are a lot of cool ideas on this EP as usual, and the production quality is fantastic, but I'd be lying if I said I was completely invested from start to finish. And the Steel Mogu EP, unfortunately, I found to be even weaker. Maybe not by a whole lot, it still works in the same way an Igloo Ghost release should, but eh, wasn't blown away by this, personally. The intro is just kind of a cloud of drill-like synths he's used on most of his other tracks already. The title track here, that's actually probably the best moment on this EP among all the other weird screeching metallic textures around him. There are a lot of bell and xylophony sounds that I quite enjoyed, even if a bit of a rehash of previous outings. And Blacklight Ultra has some pretty neat synth melodies in it at points. Could've sworn I even heard some, like, acid synths underneath all the telephone ring and chipmunk crapping. May Mode has some good moments, but it's not great all the way through. Like, I like the beginning with some of its weirder twangy Asian textures and music box melodies, though it also has these other atonal sections that have this weird, screechy, DJ scratching-like synth and pitched up gang vocals. Not as drawn to those parts, personally. And the final track, Night Racer, was probably the most irritating track in the whole bunch, has... <laughs> easily the most chipmunk vocals, and is trying to be the most chaotic and balls-to-the-wall experimental, which, yeah, I guess it would work in that way, but, it is, yeah, it certainly has its moments, but it's just not super my thing, and I also don't particularly like how this track just kind of ends abruptly out of nowhere. It's kind of a buzzkill of an ending. But more than anything, I just found the Steel Mogu EP's biggest crime just being kind of forgettable. I mean, Clear Tame at least had some more organic textures I like, and some moments like the rapping on that title track that at least kind of stick in my head. Steel Mogu kind of disappears from my head after it's over. I don't know, overall, I'm sure these two EPs are going to be big fan pleasers regardless. And as on the fence as I've seemed to be on a lot of the material offered here, I don't think any of it is bad by any stretch. The guy is still clearly putting a ton of work into his music and fitting so much detail and unique personality in it that I can't give it too much heat. But just like with Neo Wax Bloom, while I had a lot of fun with this stuff, I just don't see it having a lot of personal replay value for me. I kinda wish that Igloo Ghost would give us an album or EP that, give it so that gave itself more room to breathe. Like, have a track or two that was more minimalistic or low-key, and allowed you a second to gather your... <laughs> The gather yourself, and then later be able to better appreciate the usual more chaotic stuff he always does. There are subtle moments on both EPs, but they're really short moments within really frantic and chaotic tracks that go all over the place. I think everything just moves way too fast for me to feel like I've properly processed it, and it's just kind of sensory overload. Not to mention at this point, the novelty of his sound is starting to wear off a little, but I guess in the end I'll still recommend it, since he is such a unique and out-of-the-box producer with so much attention to detail. He's definitely worth people's time, but I personally still see some room for further improvement. So yeah, on uh, Clear Tame I'm feeling a 7.5 out of 10, and on Steel Mogu I'm feeling a solid 7. But of course this is just my opinion, you can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, they're awesome people, if you wanna add yourself to that list or make me review something, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.